Good evening. I'd like to talk a little bit about parenting with Border Polar. One of the things that I've learned over the years about parenting while trying to exist with this kind of mental illness is that you have to be willing to be vulnerable. You have to be willing to be humble. You have to be willing to set your ego aside <laughs> because you're going to make a lot of mistakes. But you need to teach your children that it's okay to make mistakes because they're going to make mistakes too. Growing up, not knowing who you are, not feeling a true identity is confusing. And knowing that borderline personality disorder and bipolar disorder both have genetic components, I have to keep in mind that my children may or may not exhibit traits of these disorders as they grow older. And what I want for them is to be better armed than I was. Uh, and so the only way that I can do that is to try to teach them the things that I wish I would have known when I was their age that I'm just learning now at 40 years old. Um, one of those things is that the only thing that you can control in life is what you do and what you say and that a person is not their behaviors. And so when we have problems in the household with someone's behavior and then mom gets a little loud and and then someone says why are you yelling at me and then mom has to calm down it gets tough and so what I found is very important is to talk to talk about what's going on and to talk about how we can make it better. Um, so if I feel like I'm going to come a little unhinged, I try to tell my kids that I'm having a hard time managing my emotions and I need to take a break. And I step outside for a few minutes. But sometimes, you know, my impulses win and I might yell like all parents do, except just like anything I do or feel, it's to the extreme. And so I might not yell like a normal parent. And that's is what I mean about being humble. I might yell like you would expect someone with a mental illness to yell. And I don't mean to be stigmatizing. I'm just saying that there's a reason for some of the ways that people with mental illnesses behaviors can be depicted and that's because they do reflect real life sometimes and if I find myself behaving that way I have to stop and think to myself the same things that I say to my children and that's you have a choice you have a choice in how you behave you don't have a choice in the feelings that come into your body you can't control that but you have a choice with what you do with those feelings and I have to say that to myself you have a choice. I don't have to yell. I don't have to yell. And when I do, I do have to own up to the choice that I made. And that's what I want to teach my kids. I want to teach them that you're going to make mistakes and that it's okay, but that you need to own up to those mistakes. You need to be honest and you need to apologize when you've done something wrong and you've hurt someone and it's okay to apologize. I had a lot of trouble with apologies when I was young. Um, I don't know why, but whenever I had to say I'm sorry, it felt like my insides were coming out on the outside, like, oh, like it was, I don't know how to explain what it felt like to have to apologize as a child. Um, it felt like everything, every fiber of my being was against this apology and there was no way that I could say I'm sorry because 
I never meant to hurt anyone, ever. And so every time I had to say I'm sorry, I felt like I was lying because I was apologizing for something I didn't mean to do. And so I sort of got this bad feeling with apologies. And I know I made mistakes and I hurt people. And sometimes I made fun of people on purpose. I was a kid. That happened. You know, but but my intentions most of the time were good. And so when I was made to apologize for something, I don't think I understood why I was made to apologize. And I associated apologizing with this horrible, gut-wrenching feeling that felt like I was going against my own values. And I don't know what apologizing is like for anyone else. I only know what it's like for me. And so as in a grown-up who's you know learned and understood that you have to apologize when you do something wrong, you know, whether it's something you did wrong because you made a conscious decision or something you did wrong because you didn't understand the situation and someone got hurt because of a decision you made, but you still have to apologize. That these apologies have to be real in that you have to be saying, I am truly sorry for the part that I played in you feeling anything but positive. Because that's honest. Because I don't want anyone to feel anything but positive. And so when I do play a part in someone feeling anything but positive, I want to apologize. And it took me a very, very, very long time to get to this point in my life. And so when I see my young child, who has a lot of my characteristics, um, because he's my child, <laughs> uh, behaving in a way that I may have behaved, um, I wonder what apologizing feels like to him. And so all I can do is impart whatever wisdom I would have like to have had when I was nine based on what I know now when I'm 40. A nine-year-old couldn't have asked for these things, you know. Um, and my mother and my father taught me well. I mean, they I know right from wrong. I know what's right and I know what's wrong and they taught me well. So I'm not saying that. But I wish that um, what I would have, what I, what I would like to hear now as a grown up, what I understand now as a grown up, is what I want to tell him. And what I want to tell him is that when you need to apologize, it's okay to feel a little bit bad. That's part of why you apologize. Because I see him struggle sometimes, and I don't know why. And he probably doesn't know why. He's young. You know, most of us don't know why we do a lot of the things that we do. And this introspection, this mindfulness, all of this growth that we do to try to figure it out is is a journey. But when you're trying to mold a young mind and you're trying to be very mindful of the genetic component, I just want to make sure that I impart as much wisdom to them that, I, that I'm gaining. And another thing that I made sure that I talked to him about is that he is not his behaviors and I am not my behaviors. And so, you know, when I yell, that's, I am not my behaviors. I made a choice and it was a bad choice and I apologize. Um, but he's not his behaviors either. And I, I don't want him to grow up thinking that he's bad in any way. I tell him you're incredible because he is and I tell him you're amazing because he is and I tell him you're smart and you're funny and you're kind because he is and sometimes I get upset with the choices that he makes um, that's pretty normal <laughs> for any parent so if you're out there and you're a parent and you have border polar one breath at a time don't be too hard on yourself enjoy the happy moments when they come soak those moments in with your kids and treat others the way you would like to be treated. So if you're questioning yourself, if you're saying, how do I how do I make sure that my kids don't end up like me? How do I make sure that I don't ruin them? We know we're not ruining our children, but you know the thoughts that come into your head. How do you make sure that you're doing the right thing? That's how I do it. I treat others like I would like to be treated. And I, I don't be too hard on myself. And I take it one breath at a time. And oh my gosh, do I enjoy those happy moments when they come. Sometimes they're few and far between because my brain doesn't always let them in. But 
I soak him up. Um, and I'm also trying to teach him something called opposite to emotion. Um, we're having some trouble with having some gratitude in our attitude. And I have found a way to be able to practice gratitude by using opposite to emotion. So when I get the urge to feel like I want to complain about something, I practice opposite to emotion. So my, my emotion is um, lamenting or whatever. I'm complaining. I'm feeling meh. And so instead of doing that complaining, and I realize I'm looking off into the distance, but this is how I think apparently. <laughs> um, when I'm doing my complaining, I... Um, I'm not focusing on what I do have. I'm not focusing on the positive. I'm not focusing on what I should be grateful for. And so when I feel the urge to complain, I stop and I think about what I have that I should be thankful for, what I have that I should be grateful for, how much I don't have to complain about. Um, and instead, I say something out loud that I'm grateful for, you know, like, I'm walking and my feet hurt and I have a blister and I want to complain about my blister, but instead I think, man, it is a beautiful day. And I say, man, it is a beautiful day. And so by doing that, I'm taking this negative thought that's coming into my brain and I'm reframing it into something positive. I'm putting positivity out there into the world for other people. And I'm not bringing, I'm practicing gratitude, which um, if you watched my other video, you'll see is one of my intentions at the end of my calmly thinking is gratitude. And, and I'm help and in a sense, I feel like I'm helping others because I think when you keep things positive and you put positivity out there, positivity comes back and positivity just reigns. And, and if you can practice this opposite to emotions, so that's something I'm, I've started, I started talking to him about today. And I really think that if he can grasp the idea of feeling an emotion and doing an opposite action, making sure that he's still able to express his emotions in a healthy way, you know, talk about them and, you know, get them out as he needs to. But I'm just, I really want to, I think this is a good tool, a good tool for anybody who has border polar or is dealing with, um, you know, any kind of struggle in terms of feeling a way that is against how you think you should be feeling. Opposite to emotion can be, a lifesaver. Uh, I like to practice it, um, especially with gratitude. When I feel like complaining, that's probably the most uh, contextual way that I use that opposite to emotion, and it's really helped me to bring more gratitude to my attitude. But anyway, it was a, a good talk, a really good talk after a pretty stressful evening. And I just wanted to come on and share a little bit about parenting with Border Polar. And I know I'm going to have a video series on this later, but I just felt the need to communicate that and um, just reach out and make sure that anyone out there who's uh, struggling with these same symptoms knows that they're not alone and it is tough. But as long as you keep on trying... And as long as you keep on telling them how amazing they are and how incredible they are and how proud you are to be their parent, then you're going to help them to build up that identity. You're going to help to build up that self-love that's difficult for people with these disorders to have. And so making that conscious effort to do those things, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. My parents, they let me know that I was wonderful. They definitely, but it didn't sink in because I have a disorder. And um, it might not sink in with them. I, I don't know. But all I can do, because I can't control that, I can only control what I do and what I say. So all I can do is continue to say it and continue to do it. And as long as you continue trying, you're going to do great. You're going to be a great parent. You just need to let them know that they're loved just for exactly who they are. And that is my little tiny bit tonight on parenting with Border Polar. Thank you for joining my Border Polar podcast. If you think that this might be of interest to anyone in your life, feel free to share it with them. And like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future.